was asked about a month ago by a random person that I don't know on Facebook uh, randomly messaged me and he said, why do you post things about your past on Facebook? And at first I um, kind of took offense and I went off on him and I was like, because I fucking can, like, you know, whatever. Um, it's my, my story. I can tell whatever I want. Um, but I've been thinking about this ever since for about a month now. And there's a couple of different reasons. Uh, for one, um, a good portion of people, uh, friends, family, especially, um, people that I was friends with, um, in my previous marriage and, uh, old family members, in-laws and stuff, um, all they heard was what I was doing. Uh, that I was an addict and in out of jail and couldn't get my shit together and all the bad things I was doing and that, um, I didn't see, um, my older kids for a while and homeless and in rehabs and just fucking a shit show for a couple of years. And, um, the, the main thing was there was a reason why I got as bad as I did. Um, my kidnapping started out pretty early in, um, my addiction, um, going down to Detroit, um, in, like, my, my heroin and fentanyl addiction, um, that was, like, within the first year of going down there, so after that, like, before I was, uh, it was, um, covering up some emotional things. Uh, I had a hard time with my divorce and not being around my kids all the time. I, I was a stay at home mom. So only having them half the time. And then, um, it was just a really, really, really bad, um, divorce and it was just messy and painful and I was broken hearted. So that's kind of where it started, but it got as bad as it did where it was like using every day, all day and homeless and selling everything for drugs and stealing and committing crimes and all that um after um my rape and I um didn't really tell anybody that it happened for years after uh not until recently that it happened and I decided to open up about it um just because there is still things to this day um even though I'm clean and doing better that it still affects me um, my ultimate goal is to write a book about my, my life and experience in my, um, history with addiction and recovery and, um, my story. But I, I felt like if I was going to do that and, you know, writing a book, you really need to get into details down to what things smell like and look like and, um, really, really do that. So obviously if I was going to have, um, loved ones and family read this book, they're going to have to know, um, what happened. And then I need to get comfortable with talking about it too. Not only that, but I have a lot of people, um, that are, were addicts with me that are either still addicts or still suffering or still wanting to get clean and just can't, or still not ready to get clean or, um, you know, are, are clean and doing well or whatever, but I have a lot of people that saw me, um, at my worst and knew me at my worst and knew me in uh, jails and on the streets and homeless. And if I can do it and I can get out and I can have a family and healthy babies and, um, go back to school and start a, a new career and do something positive with my life, then I'm hoping to be hope for these people that don't think they can um for a long time i didn't think i could do anything with um my life because of my criminal has my criminal history i was even denied to take the real estate exam i was going th through school i paid for it everything um because of my criminal history so i know a lot of people that have the same things and we're not bad people we're not hard and criminals we're not violent criminals we were stuck in a really really bad situation in numbing pain for some reason people get that bad where they're using all day every day because they don't want to experience 
or deal with their emotions that they're feeling. Nobody wakes up and they're like, I feel like I want to be an addict or an alcoholic or I'm going to do drugs today. Like nobody does that. Nobody sits there in preschool and they're like, I want to be a drug addict or whatever. That is my number one thing still to this day that I am not um, super excited about my past where when I go to the doctors or anybody that I have to say my past, I'm like, yeah, that's me, like, whatever, but it's a part of who I was. It made me who I was today, and the reason I tell my story is because for one, I deserve to tell what happened to me. Um, I survived a lot that I shouldn't have. I should have been dead like six or seven times. I should have not made it out of the house. When I was found naked in the dumpster, I was stabbed. I shouldn't have made it out of two overdoses that I didn't have a heartbeat and it was just, I was dead for a while. I shouldn't have made it out of the addiction when so many people that I know 31 friends of mine have died. Um, so I survived and I deserve to tell my story. And I feel like um, hopefully people, especially girls or women or anybody who has had um, sexual assaults or molestations or rapes or anything, human trafficking, anything that I went through, that they don't have to be quiet about their story. They don't have to suffer in silence. They don't have to have PTSD forever. But I tell my story because this is part of the way I am how I am today. Um, I have a lot of love for the people that I love, but I live each day knowing that it could be my last because it was almost my last a few times. Um, and I know what's important in life. And it's important to me for people that are close to me and my friends and family to know why I did what I did to myself and why I put them through what I put them through because I physically, literally, emotionally, mentally, uh, everything, I could not deal with what had happened um, to me. That was the reason why I started opening up about my my past and I'm trying to get through it and also it's a healing process to forgive myself there is a lot of things that I did um in my addiction especially um to my older two kids um you know losing them in the middle of um, a couple years after our divorce when they needed me the most. I have a lot of guilt and shame about that still and I'm working on it still to this day. And uh, being open and honest about everything I went through not only helps them um, kind of realize why I was doing the things I was doing and why I experienced some of the things and I, I am the way I am today, but um, it's helping me work through uh, all my trauma and past and things too. So that is why I have suddenly became so open in the last few months about um, my recovery and my story. And I'm hoping that um, if you or anybody you know is stuck in addiction, whether it's alcohol or drugs or any kind of drugs or anything, that um, you know that you can get help. And there is help out there. It doesn't have to be um, a death sentence and it doesn't have to be the end of your story just a little part of your story um, there's a lot of people that I know that were on my Facebook that I had no idea um, were struggling with addiction they have messaged me and said that they they are struggling too and um, it's that they don't know how to get out and I really appreciate um, the comments and people reaching out because at least I know too that I, I'm not alone and it wasn't just me. It happened to, um, in the middle of my addiction, I felt like, why me? Like, why does this person need, you know, get to go through life and not have to deal with the things they, they went through or, um, even some people that have tried drugs before and didn't get like hooked the way I did. I didn't understand why I went down, you know, that, that path and it just got me the way that it did. Um, so that is why 
I am doing what I'm doing and I hope that the people that appreciate my honesty and my stories um, keep appreciating me.